It's the documentary. It's about a motorcycle club from South Central called the Chosen Few, and uh, they've been around since 1959. There's, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's men. Uh, they are calling the father now. Um, uh, he started the club in 1959 because he loved motorcycles. So, and he says, if you look at the documentary, he talks about the fact that he didn't have a family and he wanted to create a family. Mm -hmm. And now the family is so huge, he has no more control of the family because they're like, you know, it's huge. There is chapter everywhere in the United States, in the Philippines, you know, in, it's all over. And um, so, but the guy, Started uh, okay, so that great. It started 1959, right? So first time I saw a uh, chosen few bikers was on the freeway, the Pasadena freeway, and uh, and I go, wow, this is beautiful. I love, you know, the back, the the, the the design. The guy is very, you know, very proud of his bike and himself, and he's driving, and you know, it looks like a great, you know, so. I pulled next to him and said, hey, pull over, I want to talk to you. Just like that. And the guy did pull over. So we were like on the freeway, in the Pasadena freeway. He found the spot, pulled over, I went over and said, hi, my name is so-and-so, I'm a photographer, and I love the way you look, I love the bike, I love everything about it. You know, I would like to take some picture. And he goes, hey, great, why don't you come over to the clubhouse? And I said, where is it located? It's in uh, 108th Street in, in, in South Central. I said, great. He said, come over Sunday. We have a party. And you're welcome to come over and take pictures. Great. Thank you. Boom. Sunday, I went over there. Just me with my camera. I walk in. And everybody were nice to me. They were all black. There was only two or three white guys. Mm -hmm. And I go, uh, is it OK if I take pictures? Yeah, sure. You know. Just like that, like they were really lovely, friendly people. So I started to give picture, and then I, they invite me back again, and then I went back again, and then so it was like about 25 years ago when I started taking picture of those guys, and I loved the way everything about it. They were nice people, they were friendly. Nobody say anything bad in front of me. I never saw them doing anything bad because it was. You know, the clubhouse, it was a place yeah. where they have a party, they're, you know, they meet friends, they get together, they hug each other, they just lovely people, you know. That was the first time that I connected with them. Then in 2011, um, you know, I, I was working in a TV, with a TV, in a TV show, uh, uh, and I have all these friends, they are like uh, cameramen, you know, for movies. Mm -hmm. uh, great cameramen, like uh, Roberto De Angelis from Italy. Like Gian Grillo. Gian Grillo is from, it's an American, Mexican, amazing uh, cameraman. Uh, Niall Roth from New York. And, and my, my son, Vasco, here, and, you know, and we shot all this stuff. And so I wanted to do, because every time I talk to them, the most important thing in their club as being a member is the ride. They want to do the ride. That's the ride that makes them feel like a family, brotherhood, together on the freeway, very carefully driving without creating problems with with, for themselves or other people. They have to be a good rider to be on the freeway, 20, 30, 40 guys going like that you know, 80, 90 miles per hour. So I said, I want to organize a ride. I talked to the, to the, to the president, and uh, you know, I said, because you guys keep talking about the ride, I want to see if I can get the feel of the ride. And the guy said, sure, let's do it. So I, you know, I got together with my friend, uh, Kurt, who was working with me on this movie project, on the TV project, and I said, Kurt, you know, let's do, something like this. He goes, yeah, great, I'll help you. So we all got involved and uh, I, I did a little uh, scouting for a route that I want to do. 
So we start from the clubhouse on 108th Street. We went through the uh, uh, Nickerson Garden uh, uh, housing project. Then we went to uh, the Watts Tower. Hmm. We went around the Watts Tower, and then we went back into the freeway. And then we drove all the way to downtown LA, and we got off on, on Terrace Street, and then we went on the Second Street Tunnel several times. It was just huge, it's yeah. beautiful, the sound and everything. And, and you know, and I really I start understanding what the ride means for them. is the feel of riding the motorcycle with a group, not a single, but a group of 20, 30 bikers and going from one place to another one. It was amazing. So we shot that, looked at it, I said, wow, this is great. We gotta do more of something. Then I start talking to them and they start telling me stories. It's okay. Let's go and interview the father. That's the guy that created the place. Then let's interview this guy. Let's interview the other guy. Then during the process of interviewing, and the time going uh, 2011 to 2014, when we finish, many things start happening with the clubs. Mm -hmm. uh, one guy got arrested for PCP. Uh, uh, the police, you know, they, they had to close down the clubhouse because that, and uh, so they were without a clubhouse for almost two years. So they, they felt like a uh, hope, homeless people. The clubhouse wasn't just a place for meeting and having a good time on Sunday. It was also a place for old member, old, like a 80 years old, they, they don't even ride the motorcycle anymore. They used to go to the clubhouse to stick together with their friends and be and be there and be, you know, like a unity, a family, you know what I mean? And that disappeared. So a lot of the old people died, you know, we went to funerals. And I remember there was, a, you know, a, a lawyer, they have a lawyer that tried to help them, but he wasn't very good. So to make a long story short, they get they have to close down the clubhouse, sell it, and pay the city fifty thousand dollars for the cost of the investigation the police had. Wow. So you know it was like a very painful, very you know all the club members they were still together, but they were like a something missing about the happiness that they had. You know what I mean? They were all kind of a sad and depressed in many ways because it wasn't there anymore, their center of joy, sure. you know what I mean? When they opened the one in Compton, it was like a rebirth. You can see the old guys start dancing and the girls dancing together and having a great time and drinking and having food and beautiful, you know, it was really happy moment, like a rebirth and so more biker came in from all over, and new member became member of the chosen few, and or they wanted to become member of the chosen few because they felt the energy again into the world, you know, into the biker world. Before we did this, uh, there was a show at the uh, Boca Museum, Art in the Street, very famous show. It was all about graffiti and art in the street, you know, and uh, I organize uh, a collection of uh, 40, 50, maybe 100, no, more than 100 paintings. They were inside of the clubhouse in uh, South Central with their, like, they were all with the, with the patch of the, of, the, of the club, the name of the, uh, of the member, the date, and, and everything, and the nicknames, you know, so it was beautiful. When I showed to the, uh, to the director of the museum and said, yeah, this is also important. Let's put it in the, in the show. So, so that, you know, I had a, already a, a nice relationship with them, but then by taking their, their, their names and putting them into a museum, you know, they are really giving me more respect. I was like, you know, you're great. So when I told them I want to do a documentary, they said, whatever you want to do, we open the door for you, whatever. So, you know, the president at the time, Doc, he said, uh, you know, let's start with the father, me, 
the old member, how we start the club, how the, the first white man, you know, got involved into the club, and then we interview Art. He was the first white boy, and you know, he told us his experience with the with the club, you know, and what it felt to him to be white with the blacks and blacks with the white, which was an amazing thing. But what it really made me do the documentary after the ride was simple as this. I thought about it for a moment and I goes, this is unbelievable. This guy here, you know, uh, Lionel Rick, Ricks, the, the father of the chosen few, he started a club, a club in 1959. And then he integrated in 1960, in a very simple, naive, non-intellectual way, with a motorcycle. He brought black and white and Mexicans, and there was even a guy from Iran at that time. You know what I mean? They were all together, riding and having a great time, regardless of what color they were. And that was amazing to me, because this was before the civil rights movement. This man, the simple man, brilliant, emotionally speaking, he did this by himself with a motorcycle. You know, and then two or three years later, you know, there was Marco Max and, uh, you know, Lutheran King, they were all working together hard, trying to, to put the two worlds together, but he did it in a simple way with a motorcycle. And that was like, okay, I gotta do something about this. This is not about motorcycles, it's about the culture of uh, South Central. It's about Los Angeles, it's about individual beauty, the people, they're trying to do what they want to do and be themselves without interfering with the world around them.